Hello from the mountains of Montana. I'm Nancy Quinn. It has been so cold the last few days. It's actually been below zero in the mornings. So I'm in my kitchen and I want to share my cranberry recipe with you. It's a tradition around my house for Thanksgiving and sometimes Christmas. This year it's both, so I'm making my second batch. Now, to get started, we're going to need about two pounds of cranberries. So here you can see that I'm rinsing through them and picking out the ones that I like. And I need five apples that are nicely chopped up. Now here in my pot, I've already put the cranberries and the apples together. And I need to add a half a cup of water, one and a half cups of sugar. Now this is a good starting point, but depending on how sweet you like it, you may want to add a little bit more sugar, or if you don't like it as sweet, you can add a little less. You can adjust that to your taste. We're going to start cooking this. I've put it on a medium high heat, and I really want to get this to a rolling boil. So let me get started. Well, the cranberry and apples are just beginning to boil. And I'm stirring them up really well so that that sugar incorporates and melts. You know, I was doing some reading and the first recorded yield of cranberries that was harvested and grown was in Dennis, Massachusetts in 1816. And I'm wondering, do any of you know how the cranberry got its name? Well, that's a good guess, but no. Actually, the cranberry gets its name from Dutch and German settlers. They called it a crane berry because when the cranberry begins to blossom, the petals are very pale pink and they sort of twist backwards and it looks like they have the shape of a crane and that's how it got its name. And in time, instead of cranberry, it was actually shortened to cranberry. Well, these are starting to boil. So in just a minute, I'm going to turn it down. When the cranberries begin to pop and open up a little bit, make sure that you keep stirring so that nothing sticks. And when that begins to happen, we'll check back in just a minute. Well, it's really starting to bubble. And I've turned the temperature down to low. And I'm going to let it cook for about, oh, maybe 15 or 20 minutes, and then we'll check it again. But wait, there's more. I do have a secret ingredient that I actually add to these apples and cranberries when they're done cooking. You know I like to experiment in my kitchen, and so this is a little something I came up with, and I'll let you know when we're almost done. Look who's trying to get my cranberries. <laughs> They always call someone to the door, don't they? <laughs> well, the cranberries have almost finished cooking, and I want to just give them a quick taste to make sure that they have enough sugar. They're perfect. I love the way the apples sweeten the cranberries, but I promised you my secret ingredient it's dried cherries. When it's finished cooking, I add three-fourths of a cup of dried cherries and mix them in. Now, if you're not a fan of the cherries, you can actually use cranberries too. One year I didn't have cherries, so I used a dried cranberry that I mixed in and it was perfect. So let me get these into a glass container so you can see them. Now you can let them cool in your pan or you can put them into a glass dish. I was in a hurry for you to see them. So I put them in this dish so that you can see the gorgeous colors and refrigerate them overnight and they'll be ready to serve the next day. They've been chilling for a few hours and so we couldn't wait for overnight. So we're going to have some now, <laughs> but I wanted to show them to you before we dove in. 
I really hope that you decide to give this a try. Like I said, it's been a tradition at my house, and I certainly hope that through the holidays that it's a tradition for you too. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.